good y'all what's up welcome back to the channel as you can tell by the title i'm about to spill just a little bit of tea just a little bit and i think it's the right time to do it because this story i can't say it's a little bit dated but as you can tell by the title I'm going to be doing a story time on the first time I got flewed out. Yeah, flewed out like the city girls. And it's so funny because I got flewed out to Miami, but we finna jump right into it. Um, I don't know if I should give y'all like a little bit of backstory on who the person is. I really don't know. But yeah, so I will say that this was around the time that I was living in um, Florida, in Orlando. If you're new to my channel, you probably don't know that I used to live in Florida. I now live in LA. So like I said, this was like kind of back then, you know what I'm saying? but yeah so basically there's a guy that i met and i met him through one of my cousins my cousin we're gonna call her <laughs> we're gonna call her trina right so i met him through my cousin like way back when i was in high school right so you know when you're in high school you kind of have a different mind you're not really thinking like you kind of don't have the same mindset that you have as an adult so when it comes to seeing certain things in people you don't really see it so boom i met i mean i'm sorry trina introduced me to this guy um and we went to her birthday party together right i didn't think nothing of it so the guy he ended up being real cool um you know we used to but i never really just took him serious like that so i would kind of say that he would be more so of a back burner dude and he had it going on i'm not gonna lie like he literally would, I would pull up on him and he would show me his car. Like he had the, the newest Mercedes or whatever. It was like, what, like an S class? But at the time, I didn't know. At the time, I didn't know about that stuff. Like I really didn't care. It's not that I didn't know, but I really didn't care. I kind of feel like in a sense, I kind of still don't care. But whatever, that's besides the point. So yeah, he used to always just like flex to me, show stuff off. But I was so young that I wasn't really thinking. So I just, you know, kept him as a back burner dude. We've always been like really good friends for a long time. You know what, honestly, I think I'm sugarcoating it because we was basically, yeah. So <laughs> I would just be completely honest. And honestly, I feel like he is one of the only other, like the only person that I have had as a fuck buddy. So yeah, that's what he was to me. Um, so, you know, when you have a fuck buddy, basically these dudes kind of stay around for a long time when i say a long time i mean like years so like i said um he was always around once i ended up graduating high school moved to florida still kept in contact with him because of course i'll always be going back home so you know one time he was like hey i'm in miami like fly to me and i'm like okay like i'm just super excited i was literally at a photo shoot when he said that and you know niggas are like so last minute like they will tell you some shit like literally the day of so you don't really have time to, time to prepare but luckily like i said i was living in orlando at the time so flying to miami is like what like a one hour flight maybe 30 minutes 45 minutes so my dumb ass i go ahead i leave the photo shoot i pay for the damn flight myself <laughs> but he's like okay i'm gonna get the money when i get there which ladies don't do that because that's just it's just stupid like whatever just make him send you the money first because niggas are dumb anyways we're gonna get into that later but um yeah so um i flew to miami literally when i tell you i have my photo shoot this was an all-day photo shoot right i was doing it for one of my friends um she had like a hair company so we will always do photo shoots basically you know to just build up her you know build up her um whatever you want to call it build up her website build up her clientele and stuff so i had an all-day photo shoot i literally got a flight the same day to miami so i would say my photo shoot ended maybe like around 4 p.m i ended up getting on the flight like at 7. so basically you know i went home i rushed i packed all my stuff up and you know i just went to the airport so went to the airport got on the plane got off the plane everything's cool and you know he picks me up and you know y'all he's like literally every time i'm with him it's a time like it's a vibe Boy, we had a time last night. Literally, you can ask my whole family. Like, we all... It's gotten to a point to where me and him are, like, friends. So, you know, there's no feelings there. And I'm being so transparent with y'all because... I can't, I don't even know why I'm just saying all this. But this is real life stuff. So, there's no feelings or anything. So, you know, he picks me up. And he likes nice things. And I love that about him. So... He picks me up in like a, well, I don't know if it was like a Rolls Royce or whatever at the airport. And I'm like, okay. And every time I get around him, I feel like I just be doing stuff that I don't usually do. Cause like, 
as soon as we got in the car, you know, one of his friends, I think one of his friends was driving. He was in a passenger, so I got in the back seat. So I got in the back seat. Um, I had all my luggage and shit. Like, we didn't even go to the hotel yet. I got in the back seat. And he was like, you want to smoke? My dumb ass. I hit the weed. I ain't gonna lie. I hit the weed. But see, the thing about him is that he be smoking like rapper weed. So whenever you hit his weed, and I don't smoke. Like, I literally do not smoke at all. You can ask anybody. Anytime I ever have smoked, it's been like a freaking terror story. So I hit his weed and immediately I'm <coughs> coughing, choking. So if you know me, you know anytime I hit the weed and I start coughing and choking, that means I'm high, like really high. It doesn't matter if I hit it one time. It doesn't matter if I hit it two and a half times. That means I'm high, like I'm out of there. And for some reason when I get high, I get really weird. So, boom, I'm hitting the weed. And I'm really just in the backseat. You know, niggas be playing their music and stuff. I'm low key stealing songs and stuff because niggas always got the best music. I'm in the backseat. I'm going to the moon. I'm going to the moon. I'm so high. Like, I'm so high that I can't even function. And we haven't even made it to the hotel yet. And for some reason, I still be like, Around this time, I would still act like shy around him. And I think that's just a thing for me. That's just my personality. So I'm trying not to let him know that I'm like high as fuck. Like I'm high out of my mind. So I try to play it cool and stuff. Um, we ended up going to the hotel. Um, oh, you know what? I just remember what type of car it was. It wasn't a, a Rose Royce. It was a Bentley. It was like a white Bentley. And I'm going to insert pictures and videos because this was like a vibe. So... We went to the hotel, it was a nice hotel, you know, top floor balcony, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hotel suite. So we went there, we checked in. Um, I think we ended up like changing and stuff because all of his friends were out there. Um, I think they were actually out there for like a video shoot or whatever. So yeah, all of his friends were out in Miami at that time. So we were all in the same hotel, not the same room, but we were all like on the same floor. So I'm really like the only girl, but I don't really mind because one these are people that's back from home i met you through my cousin i trust you i know you like i'm not thinking anything's gonna happen you know like I, I trust all of them even the friends that i don't know i know what hood you from you know so it's cool i'm the only girl whatever i can still vibe so we ended up going to one of these strip clubs i think it was what strip club was it called it was like what strip clubs i don't know if it was booby trap no it was the office and y'all the office is ghetto if you ever been to Miami and you went to the office, like, child, the office is ghetto. But see, me, I like me a ghetto vibe, so I'm not, I ain't doing no trip, you know what I'm saying? I like a ghetto vibe. I like to see some big booty in my face with some wings. So, we at the strip club. We having fun, you know? And me, when I'm at the strip club, I want the girls to, like, come to me, have fun. Like, dance on me, bitch. Don't dance in front of me. Like, show some ass, show some titties, dance on me. So, we just having fun, you know? Um... Basically, I think he was sitting down, right? I ended up sitting on top of him. Then I had another stri another stripper sitting on top of me. So we all just, it's like a, <laughs> it's basically like a sandwich. Like we basically sandwiching him, we dancing. See, cause I like to have fun. I know how to have fun. I'm not boring. Like if I'm ever around you and I'm boring, nine times out of 10 it's cause you're boring as fuck. So, you know, we in the strip club. So we doing what we do in strip clubs. We having fun. And you know, his friends just start recording and shit. I'm like, why y'all, why y'all pulling out your phones and recording? Like, it's not that type of party. <laughs> but yeah, they just pulling out their phones and recording, whatever. I feel like usually um, we will always record stuff just for like memories. Cause I feel like I do that a lot. I really don't care if y'all post me, but at the same time, keep in mind that this is my sneaky link. And you know what's so funny? I just realized we 10 minutes into story time and I have not given him a name. So I'm going to call him Jeremy, right? So his name is Jeremy. I already told y'all my cousin Trina is the one who introduced me to Jeremy. But yeah. So, you know, me and Jeremy dancing. We in the club having fun. Um, of course, I'm getting fucked up. I think I'm still the only girl at that time. I don't know if his friends brought girls or not. I really don't remember. Because I really just remember me being dolo. So when you dolo in the club, you got to like, you kind of be friendly with the other girls it's kind of like instinct so i'm just being friendly with the strippers and strippers i love strippers they're always like so fun they so cute they make sure that you're having fun they make sure you're having a good time and i love them because they just do their job like that's that's what they're here to do they make sure that you have a good time and that we did so 
you know, um, after that, we end up going back outside to the parking lot. I guess it was time to leave or whatever. I'm fucked up by now. Like, and honestly, I don't get fucked up around too many people because I don't trust people. But like I said, I trust Jeremy. I know who he is. I know what hood you from. I know your family. I know your people. But anyways, I trust him. So, you know, we get in the car and stuff um, on our way back to the hotel. And... Yeah, we basically make it to the hotel, settle in, and then, oh my God, this, this, okay, this honestly sounds like so horrible, but I'm a grown ass woman. But yeah, uh, we basically go to the hotel and stuff, and um, Jeremy is like a hard sleeper, and usually, I'm the type of person to go to sleep like last. So, he ended up going to sleep before me, but I'm still up, so I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna go downstairs, I'm gonna get some snacks. Um, like I'm hungry because for some reason when you with niggas, my light just cut off. But anyways, I'm hungry so I'm gonna go downstairs get some snacks because for some reason with you with niggas, when you're with niggas, they don't like to feed you. So I don't even recall ever being fed that whole day because he didn't eat. So and I don't think I or I may I might have ate at the strip club. I really don't know, but I'm fat and I need to eat and eat. So I basically um, went downstairs to go down to the lounge or whatever and to get like snacks and stuff. I have the room key, mind you, but I have the room key next to my phone. So, I got the room key next to my phone, and if you don't know, but now you know, because I'm going to tell you, if you put any type of hotel room key next to your phone, it's literally going to deactivate the key. So, you know, I went downstairs, I got my snacks, and I went back upstairs, and the door is not opening. So, you know, like any other human being, you knock on the door. So I'm knocking on the door. I'm trying to see if he's going to come to the door and answer. No, because he's asleep. And of course, he's a fucking heavy sleeper. So I kind of keep knocking and then five or so minutes go by and he's still not answering the door. So I'm like, is this nigga dead? Like, what is he doing? So I go back downstairs to the concierge or whatever, to the lobby, to the front desk. And I'm like, hey, I'm in room such and such. And you know, my key is not, um, basically my key is deactivated and I can't like get let back in a room, but he's in the room. So they was like, oh, well, what name is the room under? And y'all tell me why I never knew Jeremy's real name. And I've known, him. <laughs> this is so embarrassing because I've known him for, like I said, I've known him since I was in high school, like still cool to this day. But I've known him since I was in high school, but I've never known his real name. And the only reason why is because we call him by his nickname because his real name is African. And most African people don't really like their name because it's too long. So I don't know his name. So literally, I'm telling the front desk, I'm like, well, it could be under this name or it could be under that name. So by this time, they're looking at me like, bitch, are you trying to break into this room? Like, you literally don't know who's on the reservation. You can't get in the room. It's three, four, five in the morning. You down, and then at the time, y'all, I had red hair, so I'm looking like a ghetto bitch. So they probably thinking like, what's this bitch up to? So basically, they had to get like the police and stuff, and they was like, oh, you know, usually management doesn't let us like let people into the room because mind you, I'm not on the reservation. I'm just a guest. Like obviously, he booked the room. He's on the reservation. So basically. They ended up going upstairs. They had to try to knock on the door. Y'all, he's still asleep. Like, he still knocked out. I don't know why the fuck he was sleeping so hard. I still to this day don't know why he sleeps so hard. But they still beating on the door. They're like, he's basically not getting up. So they're like, okay, this is sketchy. So they ended up letting me into the room. And I honestly feel like it was because of my aura. They kind of could tell, like, I'm not the person that's up to no good. They ended up letting me in the room. And he was like, he literally woke up once I walked in the room. So I'm like, nigga, you didn't hear all the beating on the door. But as soon as I opened the door, you hear, whatever. They let me into the room. Boom. We went to sleep next day. So the next day, and I think I was out there for like a weekend. So that's probably like three days. And y'all love Miami. But the next day, um, we woke up like early in the morning, crack of dawn. I didn't even get a chance to put on makeup or anything because... Like I said, niggas are unorganized and nine times out of 10, they do stuff last minute. So he basically was like, okay, get up. You know, we about to go. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I just throw something on. I don't know where we're going to. I don't know what we're about to do, but I do know that all of his niggas are going with us. And I'm like, y'all, it's like nine in the morning. Like, where are we going? So we ended up driving to the hood in Miami. And I think this was like 
coconut grove or some shit like that. It's some hood in Miami. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm kind of hungry. Like, I still haven't eaten. It's 9 o'clock. It's 9 a.m. By this time, it's like 11. So, we're in the hood. We end up doing, like, a video shoot. And, like I said, they rented out cars and stuff for the video shoot. They had the, the setup. They had the cameraman, all that. But I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm not dressed. My makeup is not done because nobody told me what we was doing, where we was going. So, I literally just have on sunglasses in a sundress and of course my hair is done but i'm like okay where am i about to go so literally the whole time they're shooting the fucking video i just went to sleep in the back like in the back seat of the car and mind you they're outside in front of the car shooting the video so i'm like i swear to god if this video goes viral and somebody see me in the back seat sleeping like i'm gonna lose my shit but Anyways, I slept for like a long ass time, still didn't eat. I'm just sitting there starving. I'm like, I'm never hanging out with niggas again because I don't know what is up with niggas and them not eating and them just getting up and just doing shit. But no, never again. So boom, the day is still not over. We riding around the hood in Coconut Grove and um, apparently, I think that's where Plaza's is from or that's Plaza hood. So we ended up going to like the housing park. At first we was doing like a video shoot in like a little warehouse, like in with cars and shit that they rented, whatever. So then we ride into the actual hood, like where the houses and stuff at. So boom, they start shooting the video in the street. <laughs> they asked me to be in the video. <laughs> so you know, when niggas is recording videos, they like, so I'm in the background like, yeah. <laughs> Like, I'm trying to be hood. Like, I'm trying to just blend in. And then, boom, Plaz pops up. And I'm like, what the fuck? How the fuck did Plaz pop up? And he's so short. He's so cool. So, when Plaz pops up, all the little kids in the hood start running towards the video shoot. Obviously, because this is Plaz's hood. And Plaz is back in the hood. And I didn't know that the nigga that I was with had a feature from Plaz. Not the dude I was talking to, but one of his um, associates or whatever. He had a feature with Plaz. And I'm like, okay, like, this is cool, but I'm still fucking hungry. I still wanna go back to the hotel. And I'm literally just standing around, acting like a hood nigga. <laughs> literally acting like a hood nigga, trying to blend in with the video. But it was fun though, don't get me wrong, it was fun. And basically, you know, once we did like a cut in the video, Plaj just start passing all the little kids money this shit was really like a movie like he just started passing all the little kids money when you go he go 10 for you 20 for you and little kids when you give them money it don't matter if you give them a quarter they going crazy like what they screaming they calling their mamas everybody's coming down the street and you know taking pictures with plaza and stuff and they kind of think like that we're on plaza's level obviously we're not you know people still working their way up but plaza is like to me, especially in Miami, but Plaza is like legendary. He really, you, you know, he ran some shit for a long time and he still does. But yeah, everybody's outside like, oh my God, it's fucking Plaza. Like the whole hood is outside by this time. And I'm just really enjoying it. I'm recording, like literally just whatever. I'm just in the moment. So basically, um, we ended up going into somebody's mama house. I don't know if it was Plaza's mama or another dude. Mama. I don't, I don't know. We in the hood. I really don't know. We in the mama house, they showing baby pictures and they just giving those motivational success speeches and stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so cute. So after that, we finally, finally, finally go to get some food. Like, and then the thing is we didn't go to get some food. We just went to another house next door to somebody's mom. I don't, I think she was like Haitian. No, she wasn't Haitian, she was American. We went to somebody's mom house to get some food and like, she was like, oh my God, y'all, like I cooked for y'all. It was somebody mom house. So she was like, yeah, son, like I cooked for you. I made some oxtail, I made some mac and cheese. I made some this, I made that. So we like, hell yeah, we finna eat some oxtail, mac and cheese. So we got all that, we got our plates and stuff. We all sitting down in the living room, mind you, it's still just me, the only girl and about 10 niggas. We sitting in the living room and we eating the food and we just like, we all look up at each other and it's like, I know you thinking what I'm thinking. Like everybody just got the same look on their face as we eating the food. And we kind of just did the same thing. We kind of just put a plate over the food and just put it in a trash can. Cause y'all, the oxtails had no flavor. When I say, I think she cooked that shit in water. 
They had no seasoning, no nothing. The mac and cheese wasn't mac and the mac ain't had no cheese. The cheese ain't have no seasoning. The seasoning ain't had no, no milk, no whipped cream, nothing. It was disgusting. Like, I never in my life been to a black person house. God forgive me. I'm, ooh, I'm so sorry. But I've never in my life been to a black person house and they did not season their food. Like, I really didn't understand that. So, but yeah, we did that. And by this time, y'all, I'm tired. I'm like, bro, take me back to the hotel. So we go back to the hotel and that's that. I don't even know what we did for the rest of the day. I don't know if we went back out again. But see, like I said, every time I'm with Jeremy, like it's a vibe. So this was my first time getting flewed out. And like I said, remember I told y'all, he told me to pay for the flight and he was like, oh, I'm gonna give you the money when I basically, like when you get here. And I, I, don't, I just hate that. I don't know why I just do whatever. But he gives me like, I have to remind him and I don't like, reminding people of stuff when it's like money related like i don't know even if say for instance like even if you gave somebody some money and they owe you like you won't like to ask people like oh hey you know like you give me that money it's like you should kind of know but he was like oh, okay so he puts like a hundred dollars on the table and i'm like baby my flight was 300 so i'm gonna eat that up too so i'm like what the fuck and then he just leaves the hotel this was like after the video video shoot and stuff and I'm like, okay, he just put $100 on the table. I'm thinking this nigga is playing me. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm calling my sisters like, why was this nigga put only $100 on the table when he know that my flight was $300? Like, I, I really don't care. Like, you know, this came out of my pocket. It's my hard-earned money. So, um, he ended up giving me the rest of it later on. But he gave it to me when it was literally time to leave. Like, literally, we about to get on our flights to go back home. But, yeah, that was my first flute out experience. Um, I'm not gonna say that that was the most lit time with him because I got a whole bunch of story times with that particular person because like I said, we're like, we're cool. Like, you know, it's none of that extra. Um, we're cool, we cordial, we used to go out a lot. Like all of our families would go out together. Like we will always be in the clubs. Like, you know, it's just a vibe. So, but yeah, there's plenty of other stories I can get into y'all. There's plenty of other Miami experiences with him with other people, with all types of people. I feel like that might be a little bit more juicier. But that was my first food out experience. And I feel like my first food out experience was a good experience because I was kind of young, but I wasn't young. When I was in college, I wasn't really a college kid. I didn't do college stuff. I was always in Miami, Atlanta, Houston, everywhere else except for Orlando when I literally went to school in Orlando. So I feel like I always had like a grown up experience in college. So. For me to be getting flued out in college, I feel like that was just a vibe for me. It was like a cool little getaway. Basically, you know, I had to obviously wake up and go to school the next morning, but that was just like, it was cool for me. Like, you know, it was like a little one too. But yeah, that's the end of my little story time or whatever. I would love to get into more stories with you guys. I have some real juicy things that have happened, like I said before. Would love to get into those, but let me know what y'all wanna hear in the comment section. Let me know what y'all wanna see. But yeah, that's it, y'all. Flewed out, 305 Miami City Girl. I'm not really a city girl. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a calm girl, I'm, I'm a whatever. But anyways, I love city girls, by the way. But that's it. That concludes the video. I don't got nothing else to say. And we out, peace.